All right, in this video, we're going to continue our Pong project. So far, we've drawn our player and our paddles in our court, and we've actually made our ball bounce. But now we need to design it so when the ball goes off an edge, it returns to center, and either player one or player two gets a point, depending on who missed. So we're going to start with a couple new variables. We're going to make a variable for player one score. I'm going to make a new little subsection here called... Uh, scoreboard, make a variable called p1 score, which is going to start at zero, and a variable called p2 score also starts at zero, because that's how many points both players start with. Now we can actually draw this scoreboard on the screen, so let's scroll down to the bottom of our draw, and make a new little subsection below our collisions called scoreboard, and let's actually use the text tool to draw our scores. So if I say P1 score like that, it'll actually put the value of the variable rather than typing the words P1 score. So text P1 score, let's make the X position something like 400 and the Y position something like 20 and see what that looks like. There we go, little zero. Let's actually increase our text size first. If I say text size, we can make it something like, I don't know, 10. See what that looks like. Doesn't really seem to do a whole lot. Maybe it was already something like 10. Let's try 25. There we go. A little bit bigger. I'm gonna go with 15. Now I also wanna change our text alignment. So up in setup, we have our rect mode. Well, we're gonna drop in a text align center and that's going to center our text like so which is going to make our spacing a lot easier so text size 15 p1 score let's make our y something more like 25 and i think that's going to be good for our first player score now we're going to make another text command for p2 score and make it 500 instead of 400 and leave the Y at 25. So that should give us a nice scoreboard. But that of course doesn't do anything just yet. What we now need to do is make if statements for if the ball goes off the screen. So if uh, ball X is less than or equal to zero, that means off left wall, P, which means P1 missed. Okay, if P1 miss, that means P2 gets a point. So P2 score equals P2 score plus one, add point. And the ball has to go back to center. So ball X equals width divided by two, ball Y equals height divided by two. I'm just gonna drop a comment real quick to say recenter ball and then close close p2 scores let's give that a shot so if i move player one out of the way p2 gets a point and the ball resets and goes again let's copy this if statement and say if ball x is now greater than or equal to width that means off right wall, P2 missed. Well, P1 score equals P1 score plus one. Reset center stays the same and change your comment to P1 scores. Now we should have a perfectly good scoreboard. So if my player one hits over here, let's just double check. We already know that P2 score works from earlier. So let's just move player two out of the way and make sure P1 gets a point. Uh, P1 did not get a point there. Let's see, we are resetting, but let's see what I do. I put P21 score, that's wrong. There we go, P1 score, perfect. Now, the next thing that we're gonna do is actually have a splash screen. So when we push play, the game just starts. Okay, I don't want that anymore. I want a welcome screen to appear. So what we're gonna do is we're actually going to change our draw function, okay? So instead of saying function draw, we're gonna call this function pong. Okay, function pong. And I'm gonna change my close draw comment at the end to say close pong. Now that we've done that, nothing's gonna work, and that's okay. 
we need to add draw back in because we know that we actually need a function draw. So if I say function draw again, and if I call pong like this, run pong function, our game's going to work just like it did before. So why do we do that? Well, by having Pong be separate from draw, we can choose when to run it, which means I don't need to run it immediately. So what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna make another function called splash. And our splash screen is going to be our welcome screen. Okay, and I'm just gonna set this up. We're gonna make the background be black. We're gonna make the fill be white. Make our text size be 30. And we're going to write text that says, well, well actually, we're just going to put the title. We're going to put Pong. And let's just go width divided by 2, 50. Close our function. And if I put splash in here in my draw, instead of my Pong program, I should now see our welcome screen. Like so, Pong. And let's actually make this look a little bit nicer. So I'm gonna I'm gonna say text size Pong. Let's make this huge. Let's make this 150. Then I'm gonna say text size 50 programmed by Mr. Erdreich. Let's make this um, Something like that. It's a little big. Like so. And then we can drop in another one that says click to start. You could obviously put whatever you want on your welcome screen. Like you could put instructions how to play. I'm just going to say click to start. Now, obviously that doesn't do anything yet, but here's our welcome screen. Now, what we're gonna do in draw is we're gonna set up something called stages, okay? So let's make a new variable called stage, which is gonna be zero. Zero is going to be splash, one is going to be pong, and we can add as many stages as we want, and that's gonna change different functions. So we can have a, a, a function or a stage for when player one wins, for when player two wins, whatever. In our draw program, we're gonna say if stage equals equals zero, well, we're gonna run splash. If stage equals equals one, we're gonna run Pong. Like so. Because we said zero in global, we start with our splash screen. But if we add an if statement in our draw that says if mouse is pressed equals equals true, lowercase true, stage equals one, which is going to start Pong. So now we have Pong, I click and our game starts. So by having separate functions, you can have separate stages of your game, which means we can make, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna steal our splash screen function. I'm just gonna copy this guy real quick. We're gonna paste it down here. We're gonna change our wording a little bit. We're gonna call this P1 wins. P1 wins screen. We're gonna say player one wins. And then we're gonna say refresh to try again. Okay. We're gonna copy this guy. We're gonna do another one for player two. P2 wins, P2 wins, player two wins, like so. And then we're gonna give these guys stages. 
Okay, so up in our draw, we're going to say if stage equals equals two, we're going to run P1 wins. Close two. And I'm going to copy this and now say stage equals three, run P2 wins. Close three. Now we just have to trigger the stage change. So in our game, we're gonna scroll down to our score. Here's our scoreboard and we're gonna say, if P1 score is, let's just say greater than or equal to one for now. Well then we're gonna say stage equals two. Run P1 wins. Close P1 wins. Let's check to see if this works. So player one technically only needs one point and then we should see our win screen for player one. Let's just let player two miss. And there we go. Now it doesn't fit on the screen because my font size is too big, but that's an easy fix. While we're still down here, let's copy this guy and say if P2 score is greater than, we're gonna run player three and that's gonna run P2 wins. Now I don't want it to be one point, let's make it 10 points. So first person to 10 wins. And then we're just going to change our font size to fit on the screen a little bit better. So let's just make this something like 80 and 80. We now have a fully functioning Pong game. And in the bonus videos, we talk about how to create uh, simultaneous key presses. So how to make more than one player be able to push a key at a time and play against a computer instead of against another player.